Let's pray together. Most gracious Heavenly Father, your heart's desire is to to connect with every single one of us here today. And so as we open your word here in these next few moments, open our hearts to receive your life transforming truth to your honor and glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want to invite you to open them with me to John chapter four as we conclude a series called Who Am I? We've been asking the question, who gets to define me? The goal of this series is to say, who gets to to label me? And so over the last few weeks, the pastors have taken different topics and we've put together this puzzle and we started off that I am created. And then we've seen that I am a son or a daughter of God, that I am heard by my father, that I am forgiven. And so today, as we open God's word here in the next few moments, I want us to consider a message that I am new. I am new. You see, John and Tim, they started the series and they put together the puzzle and they got it into this, this nice square here. And then they were like, hey man, here's your square. See if you can make it fit into this. And so I was like, hey, thanks a lot, guys. But hey, I'm going to try it. You think we can do it? Let's see what happens. All right. I wasn't that good in geometry, so I may need y'all's help. Let's pull this here. This forgiven off here. We'll set it here. Uh, This created. That's a cool piece right there. That red one. I am heard. Let's put that over here. And we got the son or daughter. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to start with my piece. I am. Let me see here. All right. I am. Here I am new. Let's let's put that there, and let's see here. I like this green one. It's Palm Sunday. Let's put that one right here, and then uh, let's see what's next. I like this red piece. That's kind of bright and festive. Let's set that thing like right in here. All right. I think there's hope. There may be hope. I don't know. Let's put this thing right. Let's see. I think that this piece goes there, and then oh, check this out. Look at this. Awesome. I am new. Don't you love new things? People love new stuff. Take a look at some of these new things that we enjoy in our lives. Sometimes we like to get up early in the morning and we see a brand new sunrise. Isn't it great? It's like a new day. It's a fresh start. How about this? a new year. Happy new year. Get to put the old back and get a clean slate. How about this right here? A new house. Like you're a young couple and it's so, so cool to have your first house. How about this right here? That new car smell. Mmm, like you get in there, the carpet, the left. Okay. So how about this one right here? A lot of ladies like new shoes and like the, like the leather. You walk in there and you smell the purse. Ah, oh, but my favorite my fa- absolute favorite one is this next one here, Bluebell. You get a brand new one, you know, you pull the lid off, it's like not even been touched. It's like, woo, brand new. Jesus wants to make your life new. And today he's calling you out of the old patterns, out of the old behaviors, out of the, the old ways of your life, the, the mud that you've gotten trapped in in your life. And he's, he wants to get you unstuck and put you on a, a path to victory today. And let me share with you the key verse that we're going to focus in on today is this out of 2 Corinthians 5. It says, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. Man, I love this verse. If anyone is in Christ, it doesn't say if if the pastor is in Christ or if the the elders are in Christ or if my sainted grandmother's in Christ. It says if anyone's in Christ, they are a new creation. That means all of us that are in Christ have been made new and we're a new creation. In John It says that God spoke into existence everything that was created. And so today, God's voice, his powerful voice is speaking over your life today. And he wants to make you a new creation. But here's the problem that we face today, that many people are stuck in old, old patterns. And they're they're listening to the lies of the enemy. And they're listening to to the lies of of the culture that that they're speaking into them. And that, that they're not listening to what God wants for their life. And they're stuck. And Jesus has a, he has a better plan for us. He has a better life. But many times we find ourselves 
camping out in what I call these four tents of the past. And I want us to take just a moment to examine these four tents that we can get caught up in in the past that keep us from becoming new in Christ. And the, the first tent is this. It's the tent of failure. We chose to do something and we, we really regret it. I mean, this isn't something just small. This was a, a, a huge thing. Like we started down this path and we were stumbling and we lost it. And then we just collapsed straight on our face and we just, we crumbled and we did things and we, we said things in our life that we regret, that we failed in. And to this day, they still make an impact in our life. They, they might have happened back in the past, but the, the, the shame is, is right here now in our story. We said a few prayers and tried to turn it over to God, but we still feel this weight upon us, the, the tent of failure. The next tent that we can find ourselves in is the tent of disappointment. This is that place in our life when, when somebody that we counted on let us down. We were putting our hope and our trust in you, and you didn't come through. You, you disappointed me. Something I was banking on fell through and it just dissolved and evaporated. And, and so disappointment can keep us from going into a new day in our life if we dwell there. In the next tent, we find the tent of wounds. These are the things as we look back in our life, it's, and we remembered somebody said something to us, or they, they did something to me, or they injured me in somehow emotionally. They, they caused me harm. They bullied me. I'm, a, I'm, I'm wounded spiritually, mentally. It left a mark on my life. You know, today we're going to spend this, these moments looking at these tents in an honest and a real way. And it's, this isn't going to be just a pep rally day at church. We go, oh, let's all just go out and live happy for Jesus. No, we're not going to just stick a bumper sticker on it and go on. We're going to dive into these because people are trapped in these, these places. And Jesus has come. He says, I've come to give you a hope and a future. I have plans not for evil, but, but for good for you. And so he says, I'm calling you to go forward and to be new. And you're going to face days of challenge and, and some days of sorrow, but I'm going to be right there next to you. The last tent that we find ourselves in many times is the tent of loss. Many of us have experienced loss. This is stuff that you can, you can never get back. This is I lost someone that was close to me, a relationship, a loved one. I, I lost a dream and, and I'll never get it back. The innocence is lost. It's gone. There's some people that are, that are caught up in, in such a deep grief over a loss that they cannot be moving forward into the future. They're just there and they're in grief and they're trapped and they want to get out of it. And so today, the message that Jesus has for you today, he says, I got a freedom plan for you and I want to make you new and I want to regroove your life. And you say, what does that mean? My son, Nolan, loves to go to the, the record store you know, get the vinyl records. You remember the vinyls now? Like you don't see those a lot, but they're, they're collector's items. And, and we go and we'll look through boxes for hours looking for that, you know, that Beatles album or something. A record, remember when they pressed it, it would get like this groove in there. And when you drop the needle, every time it would play the same thing over and over. You said, play the same thing. And that's what happens in our minds many times. We've gotten grooved into our mind, these patterns of thinking and these voices. And the, the soundtrack of our life many times is a soundtrack that says you're not worthy. How could God love you? Who do you think that you are? And Jesus says, I want to come and I want to press a new pattern into your life. I want to create something new and I want to put you on a new path today, a new identity, a new chapter in your life. You see, Jesus was always walking into people's life. He wasn't afraid of the dilemmas that were going on. He was just walking in and, and he was making old things brand new. And so today, in the next few moments, I want us to, to take a little time to look at John chapter 4. And it's a story, if you've been around church for your life, you probably heard it a hundred times. It's the woman at the well. But maybe you're new here and you, you haven't heard the story. So let me give you just a little background. So Jesus, he's Jewish and he's walking through the, the, the land here and he's going through Samaria. And he comes to a town called Sychar. Now, 
the backstory is that there's tension, there's racial tension, there's cultural tension between the Jews and the Samaritans, and they don't they don't interact, and they they rarely would travel between in their own like the other person's land, and so it was really kind of weird that Jesus is going through Samaria and he gets to this well and he encounters a woman. You see, here's the deal: Jesus doesn't care about what the culture's saying. He's going to show up anywhere. He he's comfortable at any side of town. And he shows up with a freedom plan for everyone because he loves everyone. And he meets this woman at the well and he asks her to give him a drink. And she's like, what? What are you talking about? You're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. And, and this makes no sense. And so li- listen to what Jesus says in verse 10 of chapter four. He says this to her. Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God and who it was that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. She's a smart lady, intuitive. She looks, she's like, he, he, like you don't have a container. How are you going to get this water? And listen to what Jesus says. He answers, he says, everyone who drinks of this water at this well where we are here will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Wow. Jesus, he's, he's, with this woman and he's saying, I I can give you something that will satisfy your most inner cravings to the very core of your being. I'm going to get, I can give you this, this gift that, that will quench every thirst of your life. And she's like, Oh, okay, man, that sounds good. I'm good to go. Give me this water. Like, where can I get it? I'm ready. And, And so Jesus said, hang on, before I give this to you, I want to give it to you, but I want you to do one thing. I want you to go excuse me, go call on your husband. So today, if, we, if we're going to get out of the old, we got to ask this, how do we get free from the old and to live new? And what we can learn from this story today, the first thing is this, that we have to face up to the past. We have to face up to the past. The woman said to Jesus, give me this water so that I don't have to be thirsty anymore and keep coming back here. And he said, go and call your husband. And then she said this, I have no husband. And Jesus replied, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you've had five husbands and the man you're with now is not your husband. What you said is quite true. Wow. Can you imagine her her reaction? She's like, who is this guy? He's just here in, in Sychar and he's at the well and like he's, he's telling me things about my life. Like this is incredible. Like there's something, there, there's something different here, but she reacts the way we probably would in that situation too. When, when Jesus is like confronting her about the guy you're with now is not your husband. She, uh, she tries to divert the attention. She goes, I see you're a prophet. Now, uh, we worship on this mountain and y'all worship on this mountain. She's trying to get the conversation over here. And Jesus goes along with her and he says, the true worshiper, worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth. And as they continue the conversation, I can just sense that the Holy Spirit was beginning to work in her heart, in her mind to reveal who this was standing there in front of her. And in verse 25, the woman says, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. And when he comes, he will explain everything to us. And I believe in that moment that she began to Wow. And Jesus, I can see he kind of grins. And in verse 26, he he declares, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. And he pulls back the curtain, the veil of mystery. And she's standing there in front of the Messiah. Later, scripture says that she had gone and told the people that he told me everything I've ever done. Here's Jesus. He's He's telling her everything she's ever done. And this woman's life was changed permanently, forever, radically here at the well. Here's a woman with five strikes against her and she was on her way to number six. And Jesus met her at the well. How do we become new? For us, it begins in the waters of baptism. As we come and we come to the waters of baptism, we're given a new name. We're adopted into God's family. We receive salvation. And then now we go on to live in the newness of Christ. And so how do we do that? We face up to our past. 
It sounds counterintuitive to, to look back. You say, why do I need to look back on all that stuff I've been through? Can I just, can I just forget it? God says, hey, that's still part of your story. He doesn't go to chapter two of your life and tear it out. He's saying that's part of your story and you need to, to, to stare it straight in the face, in the eyes, and you don't have to like it. You don't have to love it or agree with it, but you need to acknowledge it, that it happened to you. Why did Jesus ask this lady to go and get her husband? Why would he say that? He says, because I want you to go back to your past so we can deal with this. So then now you can go forward into your future. Jesus had so much compassion on this, this woman. Imagine, here's a lady who's been married five times. Can you imagine? Like, I was thinking about this lady. What, like, what happened? Like, maybe her first husband was, was in the military. And he went off to battle and he got killed. And, and so can you imagine like the grief that she might have felt? Or then maybe a husband just rejected her and left her and abandoned her. And so she's got the emotion, like all the toll of the of her life that she's carried through all of these, these relationships, just on her. And Jesus is feeling it and he wants to, to make her new. See, the takeaway today is that Jesus sees your old He can tell you everything you've ever done. And he says, I have a great new future for you. As I was studying for this message, it dawned on me that our Bible has two parts. Did y'all know that? That that, that there's an old... I think the seminary would be really proud that I figured this out. There's an Old Testament and a New Testament. And what God has given us in our very hands is a meta narrative. It's a story. It's a, of what he wants to do in our life to take us from the old into the new. In the old covenant over here, you had the priestly system and the sacrifices year after year after animals getting slaughtered for the sins. And now we come into the new covenant and it's the one spotless lamb of God that paid for the sins of everyone. Over there was rules. And over here, it's just to, to live in the finished work of Jesus Christ. The old and the new. God is calling us into the new. The next thing we need to consider about becoming new is every day we need to consider the cross of Christ. I'm not talking about just... I've got a cross necklace and I've got some crosses hanging in my house. We need to take a serious look at the cross of Christ every day, a deep dive into what that means for my life. Because here it is, Jesus saying, I took all your shame and all of those things in your past and I've put them all upon myself. And even the, the, the things that that person did you wrong, I've taken their sin and theirs and I put it all on myself. And I went to the cross to pay for all of that. It's Palm Sunday today. The Bible says that as Jesus knew his time was coming to go to Jerusalem and he set his face resolutely to there, he didn't go sheepishly. He he made up his mind he was going to go in there. And the people met him, Hosanna, save us, deliver us. They were had on their mind that he was going to get them free from the Roman oppression. But Jesus had a different salvation on his mind. He had your yours and mine and everyone in the world's salvation in his mind as he looked at the cross and he he went to that cross and he took all of it upon himself and so when i wake up in the morning and i'm doubting myself and my identity and am i worthy enough or can god love me enough have i done too much god says lift your gaze to the cross and look at my love right there in front of you in the book of revelation John was able to to be taken up into heaven and given a vision. And there's a a great verse in chapter 5. It says this, in a loud voice, this is the host of heaven. They were saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Worthy is the lamb who? That was slain. How did they know that he's slain? It's in heaven. It's when Jesus reached out and they saw the nails in his hands and his feet they could see that even in the future that they could see Jesus's past and so today the hope we have is that because of Jesus's past on the cross we can be new now in our present and we can be new for all of eternity isn't that a great Jesus he paid for it on the cross and so as I consider the cross my value 
is right there before my very eyes. The next thing we need to, to understand to, to go new is that every day God is writing a new story. Maybe you wish you could just erase your story. God's saying, hey, I'm taking it and I'm, I'm going to write a new story on this page. And the Bible says that his mercies are new every morning. And I love that. He says, I know about the five busted marriages. I know about the mistakes that you made and the choices and where you were. My new mercies are with you every morning. I have a new story that's going to define you. No longer is your old story going to define you. And there's going to be pages on your book where there's, there's sorrow and there's pain on this one. New mercy. He's covering. He's walking with you. He wants to make you brand new. The last point that we need to understand about being new is this, that we need to use the pain of our past as fuel to propel our future. And you say, what, is, what does that mean? It's that we have a God who is, is, is a redeemer. And I love it that God will use what the enemy is trying to hold against us, against the devil. God uses what the enemy wants to use and he turns it back on him. And here's what that means is the devil wants to say, you've been divorced and you've been through all of this. And God says, yes, you have. But now I want you to take what you've experienced and I want you to help someone else. I want you to not just bury that pain and push it down into a hole, but I want you to, to use that. You've been addicted to a substance and now you're free. And so you need to use your pain to help someone else that desperately needs to be free themselves. Verse 34 of John chapter 4 says, Many people believe because of her testimony. You see, the lady left and went back to town, told them about Jesus. People came, they experienced him, and they put their faith in him. And so she became a person who was not defined by her past anymore, the five marriages and all her old story. She was now a new woman, and she was telling and bringing other people to Jesus. He has a freedom plan for your life today because here's the truth. The old scripts aren't working anymore. It's time for a new day. It's time to be allow the spirit of God to transform you from the inside out to say, God, do a work in my life. I don't want to, to, to walk around with this anger and this bitterness anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm releasing it. And so at the bottom of your outline, I want to ask you to ask yourself these two questions right here. I challenge you today to ask this. What do I need to let go of? What tent have I been hanging around and I need to, to let go of this substance in my life or I need to let go of this habit over here or this relationship that is, is toxic for me. What do I need to let go of and allow Jesus to heal me and take me into a new day? And then lastly, who can I ask to speak encouragement to me? You see, there's so many voices of negativity all around us. We need to surround ourselves with people who can speak words of life you are a child of God. You are forgiven. You are heard. You are new. You need to surround yourself with some positive people. Right here, I have a $20 bill. And this $20 bill is worth $20. Isn't that profound? It's worth $20 because the one who made it says that that's what it's worth. This $20 bill could be used to go buy some illegal drugs. It might be used to, to, to do all kinds of crime. It could be taken down to CVS pharmacy and bought life-saving drugs with it. Or it could be put in an offering plate and sent around the world to, to feed orphans. It could be crumpled up. Has it changed its value? No. It's still a $20 bill. And it still has the worth and the value of the one who created it. Oh, my friend, today, Jesus Christ, he wants to transform your life. He wants to make you new. He wants to, he wants to turn your life around. You are a new creation. Holy, pure, forgiven, brand new new who can label you the one who created you has the right to name you and he loves you i am new 
I am new. Let's say that together. I am new. Amen.